the great gig in the sky is obviously about death and it was kind of a play on the fact that we were doing gigs, you know. It was possibly even just the working title that stuck. <laughs> I'm very proud of this piece as a musician and the way the chord structure works. It starts off in B minor and somehow I managed to go through this whole sequence and get to B flat. It's a very weird change but it actually works, it actually flows. <laughs> And I thank Claire Torrey for that magic day when she put the voice on. I remember us all sitting there saying, this is incredible. You know, what's happening out there, what she did. I was extremely excited from hearing this incredible voice. I mean, even today, I just can't believe the effect it has on me and I guess loads, everyone else. I made up the, um, the rhythm tape in a shed at the bottom of the garden. My, my, uh, my wife then was a potter and she, she had a, a pottery studio at the bottom of the garden. I had a little music studio next to it and she had a big um, metal mixing bowl for mixing up clay. And so um, I went, oh, I know how to make the rhythm for this. And I had a Revox A77. I only had two track machines at the time at home. And so, you know, I got a microphone out and put it by the mixing bowl and threw a handful of coins in. I'm like, right, that's one noise. And then tore some paper up. Right, there's another one. And then searched around for the sound of a cash register or something. I thought, oh, it's in 7 8. OK, so I cut up seven pieces of tape of the sound effects exactly the same length and, and um, spliced them together and, you know, stuck it in the Revox going around a mic stand to hold it like that and press the button. And that, and that was it. The album was definitely helped in quite a big way by money being a single, and money was really the obvious choice. While we were on tour, the record was going up the billboard chart like that, and it eventually it hit number one. I'm in the We were touring, we went and toured, you know, and there was a big, there was a big, big buzz going on. Our line of progress in America, we were moving up and we were selling out quite good, large places, you know, selling a lot of tickets. The workload shot up, the tours shot up. I went on to write Wish You Were Here, so, you know, come in here, dear boy, have a cigar. You're gonna go far, it was all that. By the way, which one's pink? voices all over the record. I wrote a number of questions on a set of cards, on a set of white cards like that. And then we set up a microphone in Studio 3 at Abbey Road. And the cards were just sitting there on a um, music stand. And they were questions like, when was the last time you were violent? You know, And then, were you in the right? And we got, I got everybody that I could think of. Henry McCulloch, yeah. Henry and his wife had had a terrible fight the night before, and they both asked me. And Henry said, were you in the right? And that was Henry says, I don't know, I was really drunk at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was also a dream fulfilled, you know, and if we'd been brave enough, we would have probably gone, well, that's it, lads, we've cracked it, goodbye, it's been very nice, you know, and we could have all gone off. And, and I mean, I'm glad we didn't, because um, out of all the enmities and anxieties that were left um, behind, you know, in the rubble of the explosion of that enormous success, came 
all kinds of wounded creatures that had their own story to tell. Us. I've always had a problem with Us and Then Mix, although I love the song. Didn't quite like the way it was done. But now, for me, it sounds wonderful. And I think that's true for Dave, and I think it's true for Roger, actually. I think about uh, Us and Them. I thought about it recently because I listened to the record because of this 5.1 mix. I went to, to a studio with James in New York and listened to the whole thing. I must say, I think the mix he's done is terrific. I hadn't sat down and listened to the piece from start to finish, I wouldn't think, for 20 years. It was fascinating to do that and to see how well it still holds together. <laughs> Us and Them probably stands the test of time as well, if not better than any of the other songs on the record. You know, with Without and Who'll Deny, that's what the fighting's all about. It, it's strange 30 years later to be, um, you know, seeing us about to embark on this punitive adventure in Iraq. I find it hard to believe that um, it's about anything other than the oil. Yeah.